Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all here this morning. Uh, it's lovely to see such a full church. You're very welcome. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of announcements before we go into our service proper. Um, the first one is that the young people aged 10 and up who are involved in the singing, um, if you could meet in the youth room immediately after the service today. Now, I, I can see just as I look around that most of the young people aren't in here. Um, I don't know if you can hear me outside, but if you could maybe pass that on for the young people to meet um, immediately after the service in the youth room for uh, choir practice. Other than that, there are just two other announcements I see in the bulletin. That is, uh, the Messy Church will take place next week um, from 4 to 6. This is for younger children and their parents to come along. And, and there are activities for the children with uh, parental help. And they'll have a good afternoon together. If you have young children and you would like to come along, you're very welcome. If you have some friends uh, who are not... Um, normally at this church and you would like to bring them along then we'd be very happy to see them as well that's from four to six next week the other thing is if you feel that you could help out and you don't have young children don't feel you have to stay away if you can help with a handicrafts or, or cooking um, you would be very welcome uh, to come along to that as well then on the 18th which is uh, two weeks time we're having a northern ireland day of fellowship i'm not sure of the entire arrangements but you can pencil that in on the 18th it's a northern ireland day of fellowship and we will have a guest speaker and i'm not i'm i'm not aware of whether there'll be an afternoon program or not but you'll hear more next week but that's on the 18th and it's just uh, for northern ireland um essentially that's all of the announcements now and uh, we'll begin our service shortly thank you happy sabbath it's my pleasure to welcome you this morning in the house of the Lord. All our brothers and sisters are welcome here. Our guests are welcome, and I hope we'll have a pleasant and blessed Sabbath in this holy home. I would like you um, to bow your heads for a short praying. Heavenly Father, we are coming in this day in your house to worship you, to thank you for your blessing, to thank you for your presence here. We are hoping you clear our minds and our hearts to receive your word, and we are hoping you guide your speaker to, to preach what we need and what you want us to hear. We thank you for this opportunity to be together for fellowship and we hope that in this holy day we can act as your children and hope we can receive your blessings and we are asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Time now for the returning of our tithes and free will offerings. If I could invite the deacons to come forward at this time, please. Thank you. Shall we pray? Dear loving Father in heaven, as we have returned tithes in these offerings this morning, we recognize them only as tokens of your goodness and your love to us in so many ways, in every way. And we thank you for that, and we praise your name. We pray now that these monies will be used in your service, that will be used wisely uh, for the upkeep of this church and for the spreading of the gospel in this city. And we thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now uh, we're going to have the children's story. Uh, Serena has the children's story for us this morning. If I can invite all of the children to come up at this time. Thank you. Thank you. 
Who likes frogs? Frogs? Does anyone know how many uh, color frogs have you, uh, there is? Brown, green, green. Yellow. yellow. Yeah. Yes. All sorts of different colors of frogs out there. Okay. Even red. Multicolored ones are poisonous. Ooh, that one is very informative. Okay. Our story today is about frogs. Okay. Uh, this is not. A uh, literal story, it's just for uh, the lesson that we can learn from it. Okay. Um, thank you. Now, there were some frogs. There was this big long pole. Okay, big long pole. And the frogs have to compete with each other, who's going to reach the top end? Okay, the top end has a flat bit, so whoever will win, we're gonna sit up there. Okay, so all the frogs gathered together. Okay, there were lots of frogs. Who is going to reach the top bit? So there were some frogs, they were tall and handsome and they look fit, they were flexing their muscles. Oh, I'm going to reach up there, okay? Doing this, stretching their legs. They were big, big ones. They thought they're gonna reach up there, okay? And there was one very thin looking frog. He looks very weak. Okay, when he was coming up, people were saying, boo, you're not gonna make it. Look at you, you, feel so, you look so weak. Okay, you're not gonna make it. Do you think he's gonna make it? <gasps> okay, so the competition starts and all the big muscular ones, they climbed up. They climbed up halfway through, they slid back down, okay? And all the other sorts of kinds of frog they tried and um, they didn't make it. Some of them nearly reached to the top, and then they looked down. Oh, it's so far down, and they came back down. Who is afraid of heights here? The red one. Okay. Okay. So it was time. It was the turn for this little weak frog to climb up. Okay. So he climbed up very slowly, and people were looking up and saying, you're not gonna make it, you are too weak, you're too skinny. But he kept climbing and climbing and climbing, and guess what, you're right, he made it to the top. He was sitting there looking down, and people were looking at him in amazement. Oh, how did he make it? We thought he's never gonna make it. So. The mom was down there, and some of the people who were like reporters, they came up to the mom and said, what's your son's secret? Okay, what's your son's secret? And the mom said, do you know what the mom said? The mom said, he is deaf. Okay, that frog is deaf. Why do you think he win? Anyone? Yes, he doesn't get distracted, right? What else? Yes, Titi? He never looks down, yeah? Okay, he never, yes? Maybe he's not afraid of heights. Yes, he's probably not afraid of heights, okay? Probably a tree frog. Okay, the lesson there is, hands up in school, there are some kids who are always saying to you all the negative things. Hands up if you have uh, classmates, 
schoolmates in school? Right. Okay. Do you remember when your mom is always talking to you and you switch your ears off? You're very good in doing that. Okay. You have to do that too when kids are talking to you about not very good stuff. Don't listen to it. Okay. When you're trying to do something good, people will say negative things. Don't listen to them. Pray to God. Okay. He will give you strength. And you strive for that good thing that you're trying to achieve. Okay? Good? Now, shall we um, pray? Who wants to pray for us? Do you want to pray? Come on. Good girl. Come on. Now, Kira is going to pray for us. Thank you, Kira. Now, can we all close our eyes? Okay. We close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Sabbath day. Help us to keep the rest of the Sabbath holy. We thank you for the lessons that you have taught us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is coming from Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, and it reads, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that they should be time no longer. May God bless the reading of his word. If you would like to join me um, by kneeling as we seek the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, this morning we have come before you as we want to hear. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house. <coughs> Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing everybody safely into your house this morning. Unfortunately, there are some who have desired to be here today. They could not make it. Maybe they were sick. Their recovery. Maybe there is something going on in their life, Lord, that we do not know. But you, the God who created the heaven and the earth, you know what everybody is going through at this particular time. Father, we ask a special prayer this morning that you visit those that, are, that their hearts and minds are here with us today. For us that are here, as we begin to sit down and listen to you, we ask that you open our eyes that we may see you, that you were speaking to us. We ask that you open our ears and our hearts, that we may feel that you are the one that is relaying the message this morning. Father, we want to give you the glory. May this worship be acceptable in your sight, Lord. This is all we have asked. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. It is a blessing and uh, an opportunity to come and stand before you to share the word of the Almighty God. Let me just have your ears for a minute. I just want you to listen if you can hear something right now.
That is the sound of someone's life coming to an end. I know every day we live, we are not very aware of these things happening. This particular person is not even aware that his or her heart is going to make this noise or this sound. You know, when time is up in someone's life, there is nothing that you and I can do. There is nothing that the devil can do because even he, his days are numbered. So we, as Christians, should not take these things for granted because one day, God will say, your time's up. And when he says that, what are you and I going to do? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we are in need of the Holy Spirit this hour. Please hide this sinful person behind the cross and let your people see Jesus as he speaks to them this morning. Thank you for the message that is before us. Speak to us, Lord, as we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading that Terry uh, has read for us this morning is from the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 10, verse 6. Let me just read it again. It says, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, that the earth and the things and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. If you just backtrack a little bit, Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, as John was looking, he saw this angel. He came with a little book open. And this little book open, the angel himself, one foot in the sea, one on the land. So this particular angel with a book open, his message was for everyone that is on the land, everyone that is on the sea. So this particular message is for everyone who is going to hear it, no matter where you are. Now, if we take this into consideration, an angel is standing there, and all of a sudden, there is a little book in his hand, opened, and his subject, or what he is trying to address, is the subject of time. He said, there should be time no longer. So if you ask this question, if now there is a book that is open, and he's talking about time, somewhere in the Bible, this book was closed, and it's got the same subject. You don't have to look any further. If you go back to the prophecy of Daniel, chapter 12, you'll see that Daniel was having a conversation with an angel. And he was trying to ask and said, how long? You'll find this in Daniel chapter 12, verse 6. So you, he said to the man clothed in white, in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Now, he asked his first question. The angel gave an answer. He said, I heard a man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters and the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto the heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for time, times, and a half. And when he shall accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, as Daniel was listening, he said, I have no clue what you're saying. So he asked again, and he said, Oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He slightly changed his questions a little bit. But yet, the angel answered again. Because he changed his concept of question, he changed again with a different answer, but with the same subject. He said, Daniel, go thy way. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So this particular book 
from the time of Daniel, of Daniel, because this was so many years before him. Daniel was living in the time of Babylon and Media Persia. This was way, way, way before Jesus came into existence. So when Daniel was listening, he, and he saw these amazing prophecies before him, he couldn't understand. So the best way to tolerate this is God said, just hold on there, Daniel. You go your way. You live your life. You'll do what you need to do. When you pass, this book will be closed. A time will come when it will open again. They were talking about the subject of a particular time. Let me just give you a little bit of revision. Some of you might have seen this for the first time. Um, I will not go into details because this is a big subject. If you have any questions after this, please come and find me. We can talk about it. In the book of Daniel itself, um, after Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, uh, comes Rome. When Rome was leading, Jesus comes into existence. And as you can see in Daniel chapter 7, with the, um, with the beast that came out, that when Rome was leading, when it comes to the end of it, a little power is going to come up. He saw ten horns. And when he was looking at the ten horns, he saw that one horn came up and uprooted three of the ones that were already in place. This one that came up, this particular power, will rule for time, times, and half a time. Daniel chapter 7 says it in slightly a different way, but the same time period. Now, if you have to look at Daniel chapter 12, the one that we've just uh, seen, time, times, and half a time, we have to let the Bible interpret itself. When you look at Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar saw this big tree. You remember that? He saw the big tree, and there was a messenger that comes and say, chop off that tree, leave the stump. A time will come that after, he said, seven times. When you look at this in reality, Nebuchadnezzar was out living like an animal, not only seven times, it was actually seven years. So seven times in the Bible is seven years. So one time is one year. Are you following? So when you look at this, he said, so time, one year. Times, more than one year, so two years. Half a time, so half of a year. You calculate it together in a Hebrew calendar. There are 360 days in a year. Time, 360 days. Times, 720, because 360 multiplied by 2. Half of a time, 360, you divide it, gives you 180. You calculate it. The Bible specifically said that when this little power comes into existence, it will rule for 1,260 days. Now, at the end of that time, at the end of time, times, and half a time, the Bible said, first, when Daniel was listening, he said, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So at the end of the 1,260 days, all these things will have been finished. Daniel could understand. He said, so he asked again, he said, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So God said, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are sealed till the time of the end. So this particular time period, at the end of this ruling, of this 1,260 years, the time will be called the time of the end. Are you following? Now, so all throughout history, I'm not giving you, I'm going to give you a history lesson. All throughout history, people know about this. And that's why there was the message of um, 22nd of October, 1844, one of the biggest dates in history of Christianity. The day comes, everybody was getting up, they were getting dressed, they said, today, Jesus is coming back. Because when they calculated the 1,260 days, it fell from the time the little horn started ruling, 538 AD. It takes them to the end of 1798 AD. Are you following? 1798, they said, oh, if that is the end of the time, then when Daniel said in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, unto 2,300 days, the sanctuary will be cleansed. They said, oh, maybe Jesus is going to return. 
And the whole Christian world, especially William Miller and his followers, they start preaching that Jesus was going to come back October 1844. That morning, you can imagine, going to your neighbor and said, neighbor, what are you doing? Get up, Jesus is coming back 1844. The neighbor said, all right. Get dressed as well. That morning, maybe they have a nice breakfast. Some of the people I was reading the, um, what happens during this particular day, there are some people who decided not to eat. They said, my next meal is gonna be in heaven. They got up that morning, they got dressed, they wore the best clothes they've never worn. They said, today we are going to heaven. 10 o'clock comes, midday comes. The sun begins to set. No Jesus. You can only imagine how disappointed they are because they were so looking forward to having a meal in, in heaven. And now, he didn't turn up. Something went wrong. So they go back into the Bible and they dig it up. Revelation chapter 6. Let me pick up the story from here. Revelation chapter 6 talks about the seven seals. At the end of the sixth seal, it says that when God opened the sixth seal, the nature, they acknowledges the opening of the seal. There was an earthquake. The sun became black as a sackcloth. The moon became red. And the stars fell. For everyone that was looking at prophecy, they saw how these events unfold in front of them, just like the Bible said it would happen. Some people say it's a coincidence, but bear with me. After that, the next thing that was going to happen, the skies was going to roll. When the skies roll, instead of people running to say, yay, Jesus is here, you, he saw people running into the mountains and say, fall on us. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Wow. I thought Christians are supposed to be happy when Jesus comes back. Don't you think? But they were running. And these were Christians. You know why? Because they were addressing Jesus as a lamb. Only Christians would say that Jesus is the lamb of God. These particular people, they were addressing Jesus as the lamb of God. And at the end of it, he said... For the great day of his wrath has come, who shall be able to stand? No one was going to be able to face this. But they were wrong. Because in Revelation chapter 7, it tells us that. But why were they running away from the throne of God? They're supposed to be accepting him. They were running away. You know why? Because they know very well what the Bible says. Ephesians 5, 6. If you have your Bible with you, or write it down or something, go read it later. He said... No one deceive you with empty words, for because the sun, such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. You know why they ran? Because they know that they were disobedient people. Now let me ask you this question. Are you a disobedient Christian? Romans 2, 5, he said, but because of the stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against you. These guys, they were running away from the second coming of Christ because they know how, dis how disobedient they are. They know how stubborn they are. They know how stone-hearted they are. That's why they said, who will be able to stand this great wrath of God that is come upon us? Before the seventh seal was opened, John the Revelator put a post there. He, Jesus introduced a special group of people in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, 2, 3. If you read it, he said that four angels, they stood by about to hurt the earth. As they were about to be released, one angel crossed their path and said, Hold on, wait. Before you hurt the earth, let us seal the servants of God in their foreheads. Friends, everybody in this world, whether you like it or not, is receiving something in their foreheads. In Revelation chapter 7, God wants to seal you in your forehead. In Revelation chapter 13, 
the other ceiling, whether you like it or not, is coming. But there can only one place for ceiling in your forehead. It's either this seal or the seal of Revelation 13, which is coming before us. But everybody is receiving something in their forehead, whether you like it or not. This group of people, this angel said, as he was coming, he was holding the seal of the living God. He was going to seal the servants of God. Now, as this angel flew by with his seal, a Bible identified this group of people, that there are a group of people that need to be sealed. Now, I want to take your mind back slightly. Remember creation? At the end for a seal, at the end of every letter, when you finish off your letter, you sign it and you seal it. Today we use rubber stamps to show the authenticity of the letter that you're about to send. During creation, after God created the heaven and the earth, he also put his seal on his creation so that anyone who sees it can know that he is the God who created the heaven and the earth. He sealed it with his Sabbath. A lot of Christian societies out there, they know very well that Jesus died on Friday because they celebrate Easter. And as Jesus died on Friday, the Sabbath was about to begin. That's what the Bible says. And on the first day of the week, Jesus rose again. Everybody knows that. And yet it is so difficult to calculate if Sunday is the first day of the week that Jesus arrives, when is the seventh day? Very difficult. Very difficult. But this particular angel is coming with the seal of the living God to seal only those who are the servants of God. Revelation 22, my brothers and sisters. People understand that before the winds are released to hurt the earth, a sealing must take place so that it protects this group of people when the winds are released. So at the end of the sealing, this is what God is going to say. He that is unjust, let him unjust him. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. You decide where you are going to be when Jesus said, the time is up. Today we've seen that since 1978, after the ruling of the 1,260 years of the little horn, you and I have been living in the last days. Some people got it wrong in 1844, but it's 2019 now. A day is a year. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's only been three days, or two and a half days, since 1798. When Jesus is going to stand and close that door and say, who that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Which side do you think you are going to be? Now, you know, in uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, when Jesus comes back, he's already got the reward. He already knows which side you're on. So that means sometime before he actually comes, You've already been judged. You have already determined which side you want to be. You've already decided which seal you want in your forehead. You've already decided when God closes that door, which side you're going to be in, in or out. You already decided because the Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. If he's coming with a reward, he already knows who's he's coming to reward. Are you following me? This is a serious subject, friends, because some of us look to the coming of Jesus. But we are forgetting one thing. The door is going to be closed before Jesus comes. And when this door closes, you can still come to church. You can still teach your children. You can still go to work. No one knows. That is why this angel that we saw was standing one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. He wants everybody to know this message that everyone is living in the end of time. 
Hebrews chapter 3, it uh, highlights a very, very special message. Three times in one chapter, he said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. He said again in verse 13, he said, But exhort one another daily while it is called, but today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And before he finishes on that verse, on the chapter, he said again on verse 15, while it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Those of you who have dealt with concrete, cement, the cement is only as good as you are mixing. You can shape it in any form when it's still soft. But after time, when it hardens, you can form it no more. That's why the Bible is saying, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You know, friends, there are some examples given in the Bible. Let me show it to you. Remember the story of Noah? When God saw how the world has been, he was very disappointed. He repented. He said, I can't believe I made this group of human beings. So he decided to judge the world. And he said to Noah, Noah, build an ark. For 120 years, Noah's building the ark, preaching to the people, telling them, repent. Flood is coming. Repent, flood is coming. 120 years. Some people started off helping Noah. I said, yeah, Noah, you're right. We'll build the ark with you. 120 years is a long time. And as time goes, fewer and fewer came to help out in the building of the ark. They were given 120 years, probationary time, for them to come to repentance. After the end, you know, there was only eight left. God told Noah, Noah, get in. Noah has got nothing to do with the closing of the ark. God closed it. He said, get in. Once people are in, God closes that door to ensure when he closes it, no one else in this world can open it. Friends, that is a sad story. People inside. Seven days, it doesn't rain. The faith of those inside are starting to get tested. You, you ever thought of that? You inside, God said it's going to rain and it's been seven days, there's no rain. What's going on? Did we make a mistake? Then on the seventh day, because people have not, never seen rain at that time, rain starts to come. Just like God said to Noah that it will rain. But unfortunately, the door is already closes before the rain even begins. Remember the story of the four angels holding the winds? Before it's what even released, before the winds were released, the doors were closed. The ceiling is completed. Let me give you another one. You know, I can only imagine that day when the door shuts. There was only two people, those that were inside the ark and those that were out. Only two. Remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? God saw the filthiness of that city. He came down to pay a special visit there. You find this in Genesis chapter 18, chapter 19. And when the angel came to see Lot, before he reached Lot, he came via Abraham. And he told Abraham what was about to happen. And Abraham knew that Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, so he started pleading with the angel, said, how about if there were 50 people? Would you still hurt it? He said, no. He said, may I trouble you again? So he reduced the figures a little bit. And he goes on for a little while until he got to 10. The angel went. They visit Lot. Very sad story. And when the angel saw how bad this city had become, he told Lot, go to your families. If you have any, your in-laws, your sisters, your brothers, tell them, get out of this city. Because tomorrow, God is going to judge this place. You know the story. Lord went. 
went to the son-in-law. They said, oh, come on, Lord, come back another day. Don't disturb us. It's middle of the night. They have no idea of the strong warning that the Lord is bringing. They have no idea. You can only feel how hurtful this is for Lord to see their very own family ignoring this warning. So he went to the next one and to the next. When morning was just about to break, the angel said, Lord, there's no more time. It's time to go. And they did not only say that. They guided them out of the city to make sure, to ensure that there is safety in Lord's family. Brothers and sisters, before God is going to rain judgment in this world, he will bring the message one more time to wake us up of the time that we are living in. Unfortunately, some of us will ignore it. Just like in the time of Noah, just like in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. It has happened so many times in the Bible. It can be proven there. And today, some of you sitting here would have heard that I think I'm getting a wake-up call this morning. I don't know. But before Jesus comes, before Jesus allows the winds to be released onto the world, he wants to make sure his people are sealed. Do the people in the past know about this? Of course. With Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, he said, he was trying to tell the people, seek the Lord when you still can. Isaiah is aware that the time will come when people will run to and fro and God will be nowhere to be found. Read in Amos chapter 8. People will be running to and fro, looking. They will be starving, but they are not going to be hungry for, for food. They'll be hungry for the word of God. Where is it gone? The Bible will still be here, friends, but there will be no more Holy Spirit to tell you to repent because the door has already been closed. Now, when we started off, we heard the sound of someone's life coming to an end. Today, I am trying to wake us up for our Christian life that it is coming. It is coming. The door is closing. Whether it's going to be today, whether it's going to be this evening, whether it's going to be tomorrow or next week, I don't know. But I know that the door will be closed. And when that door closes, which side do you think you are going to be in? A long time ago, a boy had this hobby of collecting eagle eggs. They collect eagle eggs and they went out to the city and they said, look at what have I collected. So they've noticed that very high up in one very steep cliff, there is this nest of an eagle that, is, that no one has ever touched or reached because it is in an angle that is very difficult to upsail down to get it. So this boy was feeling a bit adventurous today, uh, that particular day, and he said, I'm going to go and try this. So he went from the top of the hill. He made sure the rope is secure onto the ground, and he upsailed down. He reached a point where he saw the egg. It's like, wow, I'm going to be famous. This is amazing. This is absolutely what I've been waiting for. He found a place to put his feet. He looked at the eggs, said, wow, I can't believe how people are going to be impressed. It was his dream. It was his hobby. It was what he likes to do. And as all these thoughts was going through his mind, he forgot something. He has already let go of the rope that brought him down. He looked at the egg, and he froze for a minute. And he said, oh! and he looked back, and he saw this rope swinging away from him. He's got a choice to make, eggs or rope. If I stay with the eggs, I'll be dinner for this eagle when she arrives. If I go with the rope, I could be with home with my family today. So he is challenged with this very important choice to make. Now he knows as he watched the rope flew by away from him, he knows that when it comes back, 
that only time it's going to be the closest it's ever been. Then the second time, then the third time. So he knew if I have to make a decision, it has to be now. Because the longer I wait, the further this robe is going to drip away from me. So he squatted down with all the energy in his leg, in his mind, all working together. When this rope was coming, it reached a point where it just stands still before it goes back. And at that particular point, he jumped, giving everything that he's got because he wants to be home that day and not lunch for the eagle. Some of us, when we are enjoying ourselves in the little things that we like, that we enjoy doing, only you know. Sometimes unconsciously you are forgetting that you are letting go of the one thing that can take you home. And the only way to get back to it is if you let go, forget whatever that you enjoy doing. Reach out for that rope because the first time it comes, it's going to be the closest it's ever been. That's why in the book of Hebrews, it's trying to tell us, today, if you hear the voice of God, harden not your hearts. Today, if you can feel that the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something, don't push it away. Because the next time it comes back, it may not have the same effect as it has today. I want you to just sit down and listen to Brother Terry as he continues this message with a song that he's about to sing. of joy and that your right hand there are pleasures forevermore always 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 I have said you of the Lord and inquire in his temple forever
I say always, 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 I have sent the Lord before me, yes I have. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Some of us have been Christians for a while. <coughs> Young people, as you're growing up, the world is changing so, so fast out there. But at the same time, the door is closing. Where you stand, you determine that. God's job to close the door. Your job to decide where you're going to be. I'm not leaving this platform today challenging each and every one of you, wherever you are sitting. I believe that God has spoken to us today. And if you can feel and believe that God has been reminding you wherever you are sitting, I need you to surrender your heart. If you have been a Christian for a long time, it doesn't matter. Convict daily. Because when he comes and he calls names out of those clouds, please, don't let your name be missed on that list. You and I have yet to be done. Just close your eyes for a minute. Some of us sitting here today, if you feel that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you today, and you wanted to renew the commitment that you've set before him a while back. If you believe that you're living in the last days and you want to make some changes, I need you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't be scared. Raise your hand. Amen. Raise your hand. Only God is looking, not me. This is between you and God. For those of you that are sitting down there double-minded, God is near today and tomorrow I don't know how near he's going to be. Please, if you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. Lift, keep your hands up. Heavenly Father, as you look down from your heavenly throne, these are your people. We felt that today you've reminded us of the time that we are living in, that we have no control about it. We also admit how sinful we are. And you've decided to close the door tomorrow, the next minute, the next month. As of today, please write our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We want to give you the glory. Thank you for speaking to us today. Be with your children as they leave your sanctuary today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Today we give glory to you, our Heavenly Father. We know that soon you will be coming. If that day happens before we meet again, Help us to meet in the clouds of your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.